It's time for your daily dose of personal finance. You're watching Money Time with me, Sreshtha Tiwari. Over to the top stories that made it to our bulletin tonight. So the fourth quarter results of TCS were slightly lower than analyst expectations. Consolidated revenue has risen marginally quarter on quarter by 1.6% and has come at 59,162 crore rupees. But on a year on year basis, revenue has increased by more than 16%. March quarter profit increased annually by 14.8% to 11,436 crore rupees. And for the full fiscal of 2023, its revenue was reported at 2.25 lakh crore rupees. While the net profit in FY23 came in at 42,303 crore rupees, the company also announced dividend of 24 rupees per share for its shareholders. The government has released the cost inflation index for the current fiscal year. Taxpayers can now use this index to calculate how much tax they need to pay on sale of immovable assets after adjusting for inflation. These assets include properties, shares of a company, jewellery and so on. It will enable taxpayers to remit tax on time for fiscal 2024. The cost inflation index for FY24 will be relevant for the assessment year 2024-25. From cost index, now moving on to a new REITs index. The National Stock Exchange has launched the country's first ever REITs and Infrastructure Investment Trust Index. It is known as Nifty REITs and Infrastructure Investment Trust Index. REITs and Infrastructure Investment Trusts publicly listed on the NSE are enlisted on this index. The index will not allocate more than 33% to any particular security. Infrastructure Investment Trust IndiGrid has said that NSE's latest index is likely to encourage passive investment in India. The index will have a base value of 1000. Nestle India has declared an interim dividend of 27 rupees per share for calendar year 2023. The dividend will be paid on and from May 8, 2023 along with the final dividend for the year 2022. The FMCG major had earlier recommended final dividend of 65 rupees for the calendar year 2022. Nestle India is going to declare its results for the March quarter on April 25th and the record date for receiving the interim dividend is April 21st, 2023. Canara Bank has raised rate of interest on various types of consumer loans like home loans and auto loans. The public sector bank has hiked its one-year MCLR to 8.65%. The interest rates on various types of loans are tied up with one-year MCLR of the banks. With Canara Bank raising its one-year MCLR, various types of consumer loans will, will become costlier with the public sector bank. Apart from Canara Bank, loans of IDBI Bank has also become costlier from today. And talking about IDBI Bank, it has also raised interest rates of fixed deposits. The private bank will give as high as 6.75% on FDs of one year. On tax saver, five-year FDs, account holders will get 6.5%. Senior citizens will get an additional rate of 0.5% on all FDs with the Mumbai-based bank. SEBI has directed mutual funds to give investors the option of subscribing to direct plans of alternative investment funds as well. SEBI is also planning to make alternative investment funds more attractive for the investors. The capital market regulator has directed mutual fund distributors to lower different types of fees and charges that will be levied on subscribing to direct plans of AIFs. AMCs are expected to roll out direct plans from May 1st onwards. Plus, the directive to charge lower fees will also be binding on AMCs since the time they start rolling out such plans. HDFC Group will give plenty of opportunity to investors to subscribe to its debt instruments in the coming times. The group will issue different types of debt instruments worth 1.07 lakh crore rupees to the investors. Out of this, HDFC Bank will issue close to 50% of the investment instruments. HDFC Bank's board will consider the proposal at its upcoming meeting on April 15th. HDFC Twins merger is expected to complete by the second or the third quarter of FY24. The group will also use a part of the investors' fund to finance affordable housing in the country. 
And the Paris-based Energy Watchdog International Energy Agency has said that the oil prices can again increase. There were high chances of oil prices going up from the current levels. Currently, Brent crude is ruling around $85 per barrel and this could impact India's economy and Indian consumers. Though the Energy Watchdog was also praiseworthy of the resilience shown by the Indian economy, IEA's head Fatih Birol has said that India bought oil from Russia at a discounted price. It was completely a legitimate step. The government's NCS portal has registered phenomenal growth in vacancies in the financial year 2023. Employers from different industries posted a record of 35.7 lakh vacancies on the government's NCS portal. It is widely known as the National Career Service Portal. Out of the total vacancies, the finance and insurance sectors have together posted more than 50% vacancies. Hotels, Food service and catering, manufacturing, health and education sectors have also posted good number of vacancies. The Government of India has been maintaining the NCS portal since 2015. The portal is open for job seekers, employers, training providers and placement organizations. These stakeholders can take services of this portal absolutely free of cost. Well, that's all we have for you on Money Time tonight. For more on the world of personal finance, keep watching Money Night.